greetings and felicitations. Okay, the first round. Boom. <laughs> and oh, geez, that was just boom. unnecessary. You kidding me? You can't be out of range. YouTube, what the crap is going on in Troy? Hi, I'm uh, I'm Jarl of the Appian Way, aka Appius, and I'm helping Air Carthage out. He's going to be on vacation for a little bit, and I'm helping him by putting, giving him a little bit of content for his channel for while he's gone. And this is Troy. It's still, I think, probably the best looking Total War game that they've made. To date, it's just the fantastic models and shading and lighting and and well. Anyway, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop the gushing about this game for a second and say that we are anticipating news sometime this summer about when the Steam launch is gonna be and what that's going to look like. In the meantime, though, this battle replay was submitted to me by somebody who's looking for a little bit of advice, and I figured this is actually a really good way to also give you all on uh, Air of Carthage's channel, a rundown on just how, uh, just kind of how these multiplayer battles have been going lately. Now we've got uh, 1v1 here at 12,400 funds, very similar to Warhammer, and it is a Hector of Troy army versus a Mycenaean army. Mycenae has brought a ton, I do mean a ton, of light infantry in this battle. The You can tell the light units by their circular shape of their banners. This player brought specifically four units of militia, six skirmishers, which is definitely an unheard of choice in most multiplayer battles, but both of these guys are actually rather skilled and know what they're doing. We've also got a pair of young spears here, and I believe there's actually two club warriors. These guys, though they're hiding in the tall grass like they're uh, velociraptors right now, these gents, hold on, let's zoom in on them, are pretty impressive for what they do. They're um, a mid-tier cost unit. They have um, no shield, really, really kind of middling armor, but they've got great speed, and um, and they have these these two really devastating javelins that they throw as well. On top of that, we've got a pair of reinforced chariots. Now, the submitting player, who's playing as uh, Hector of Troy, he's also brought a somewhat I would I would consider uh, experimental army. Um, but it's a little bit more conventional than the Mycenaean force here. He's, he's opted for two champions of Troy, heavy infantry. You can tell by the hexagonal banner. And the gold border also says that this is a, a an elite unit. Um, they're supporting a Hector's Chosen, which is, uh, oof, let me tell you, one of the, the best swordsman units in the game. The diamond banner shows that it is a medium infantry. And they're backed up by a medium spear fighters. I don't really like these guys ever. But hey, here they are anyway. Um, okay, we've also got a renowned archer hiding in the tall grass here, as well as a pair of regular archers. I never take, honestly, I almost never take any skirmish units. But these guys, they they they've been having some success lately. I won't I won't shoot that down. And another fantastic unit. This is a mythical unit. You can tell by the shape of its of its banner, the Corvantes. The Corvantes are about as awesome in melee as they look. Just just take a moment to appreciate, oh, let me get the camera up. Take a moment just to appreciate how glorious these guys look. They're pretty, pretty phenomenal. Now then, what else do we have here? We also got a pair of Militia Warband. These are the cheapest of the, uh, the Hector of Troy roster infantry. There's a heavy infantry Trojan defender out here with uh, they, that use clubs and shields, heavy armor, pretty good unit. Heavy Trojan chariot, which is arguably one of the better, if not the best, uh, chariot unit in the game currently. They're being led by a Warlord Mentor, while Mycenae is being led by a Defender Companion. Let's stop wasting time. I'm going to go ahead and speed things up. Now, the first thing I kind of want to state about the Hector player's style here because he is looking for advice that's why he sent it in to me is i think bringing three archers and one renowned archer is i think it i think it's not the best way to use your funds i think if he had brought just simply two renowned archers and saved the money um he would have performed much much better now there's a huge weakness in the mycenaean position here and that is this sh spot right here all of this is light infantry and 
if he had just simply taken his heavy chariot and charged this right now, there's no way Mycenae can do anything about it. All of this infantry here and those skirmishers would be destroyed. Yes, the chariots would take some damage from javelins, but it would absolutely be worth it. All of that out there would make up for the cost of this um, heavy Trojan chariot. Because staying out here, he's currently outnumbered by, by these two reinforced chariots, which will beat him up. Now, Mycenae, I forgot to mention, has brought a pair of heavy infantry, and these are the elite Agamemnon's guards. These are a uh, charging spear unit. They also happen to have a bonus versus um, bonus versus heroes. And speaking of heroes, there is the defender companion hero right next to them. Now, uh, Hector is going to come on up here, and he's going to start picking away at some of the units uh, with these with these archers. But I think he shouldn't be bothering with the militia. The militia is really a throwaway unit. It has the expendable trait, so killing them doesn't even really matter. And they have shields, so this is exactly what the militia was brought for, was to soak up um, ammo off of these units. And if he wants to catch any value out of his archers, he needs to make sure he's killing the right stuff, not just the cheapest infantry in the game. A better target for him for these archers would definitely be units like Young Spears, even Agamemnon's guards with 100 armor, they still don't have a shield. Um, another good target is, and they're starting to get into it now, the Skirmishers. He's moving up his Militia Warband to do the same thing that the that the Mycenaean Militia is doing, which is stand out in the way, eat some ammo, just delay the enemy, slow them down. This is still a really viable target for those heavy chariots. So he's moving his heavy chariots up here now, and he stops. He stops right in the line of fire of these skirmishers, and they're going to go ahead and make make these uh, heavy chariots suffer a little bit. Actually, I think he got away with it here. It seems as though the archers were still the targets of the skirmishers. Skirmishers might have also gotten pulled into melee with a militia warband. That is absolutely the case, but here comes the reinforced chariots. That militia warband is a very lonely unit. Finally, he's going to go ahead and he's going to charge in here with heavy Trojan chariots, get into these militia. I just think he should have gotten in here a lot earlier. The club warriors, in the meanwhile, are sneaking around to the side. They're not exactly hidden, but they are going to, to cross all the way around behind Hector's position. Now, Hector is very outnumbered in this battle because of all that light infantry. Um, my city brought 1,700, whereas Hector brought only 1,100. And he's got to, and he absolutely has got to make as much value out of, out of his troops as he can. This is a wise play here. He's moving up his heavy infantry to engage with the heavy chariots. Heavy chariots are a very powerful unit in this game, but the best way to counter them is with heavy infantry, especially heavy shielded infantry. Their mass just completely stops chariots dead in their tracks, and then, like you can see right there, they eventually start destroying models. Now, the club warriors managed to sneak right in front of the Hector's Chosen, got away with murder here, and now they're going to start chasing away these skirmishers, and that is exactly the kind of thing that the club warriors are really good for. And it's just really unfortunate because Hector needed these units to um, to catch as much value as they can. And you can see not a single one of them has even earned their next XP rank, though they are getting closer. We're not archers, but 78 kills is a very good showing. But because Mycenae brought so many troops, he's able to tie down all of the um, Hector's elite's units. And that keeps his skirmishers free to do really horrific damage to the Champions of Troy. Champions of Troy with 105 armor and a shield that blocks 85% of missile damage. But the problem is, is that they're surrounded and the damage is coming from every direction that their shields aren't. And the chariots are just running right over this. 46, 53 kills um, respectively. There's These skirmishers have been really, really hurt. The Defender Companion here is doing just fine. We've already got one of the Champions of Troy routing, which is very bad news. The heavy units only had chariots. They did come back through here. They tried to get an attack on these uh, skirmishers. But as you can see now, it's it's really just a matter of what can the uh, Mycenaean player throw at the elite um, Hector's infantry and tie them down long enough for other units to get the job done. You know, look at this. This um, reinforced chariot managed, let's see here, what is a 60 kills and it's still just getting completely bogged down and torn up. The Hector's Chosen did manage to get in here. They've added some uh, some of their their damage potential to the fray, but you can see the, the skirmishers are already lining up, and they're already unleashing javelins at Hector's Chosen, and it damaging them up even further. The Warlord is activating his Rallying Cry, and his um, Heraclean War trying to buff the abilities of the Chosen right there with him. 
there's only a club warrior here, and they, they'll fall apart to the steady steady stream of Hector's Chosen. And the Hector's Chosen, they're they're engaged with the uh, with the heavy chariots here and, and obliterating them. This is going to leave the two heroes right here next to each other to fight it out. Let's see here. Yep, there they go. They're now going into their, their dual animations. Fantastic. There are still some javelins getting thrown in on this party. The, the Cordobantes, as elite and as amazing as they are, they're completely surrounded by Agamemnon's guards and some, um, some cheap militia just throwing their bodies into the fray. And yet there's still javelins to spare. The heavy Trojan chariots did come back, but they're going to get slowed down by all of the tall grass here. And that's going to greatly impact their speed, their melee attack. And even, uh, even their uh, melee defense gets nerfed in the tall grass, and they're just going to fall apart rather than hurt those skirmishers. So chariots are a very powerful tool in this game, but you have to use them right. If you use them against the wrong targets, like heavy infantry, or if you put them in, in terrain that, that hurts them, like tall grass, mud... Um, trees and scrubs, they'll fall absolutely apart. Now this is this is a great um, use of funds here. The This Champions of Troy could be a significant threat, but he's just gonna go ahead and take advantage of his numbers and just, you know, throw away his really cheap militia. This is, we're talking about a 300 funds unit being used to chase away a, a 1,350 funds unit. That's catching value right there, absolutely. Both heroes activating their heroic, epic Aristea. To help them um, help them out in this uh, fantastic duel, the, the the shining light of the gods glowing on them. But you can already tell there's nobody left for Hector. All of his units are gone, and that is going to end the battle as soon as this Aristea ends. Yeah, very very fun battle and lessons to be learned. I I, I don't I don't really like the picks either army made. I think um, I think both of them made some some errors. I think the Mycenaean force was far too vulnerable to heavy chariots with all of the um, the light infantry that it brought, but the numbers paid off for him in the end. It absolutely paid off for him in the end. As you can see here, that 1,700 versus 1,100 is a big deal because it freed up his six skirmishers at, to at least at some point. Some of them are going to do the damage that they need to do in order to be valuable. Um, 24 kills and only half an XP on that one, but the other one you saw almost full XP and almost 100 kills. Now in Troy, we can't see the exact, um, you know, troops and damage and damage value breakdown, but we can infer some things based on how they performed in battle. So first of all, look at this. Club Warriors, 252 kills, and I guarantee you it was against this core of the, the Hector skirmishing power right there. Fantastic numbers. And while the heavy Trojan chariots did do better with 114 kills than the reinforced chariots, the reinforced chariots ended up performing better in the battle by completely keeping Hector's infantry on the back foot. Um, 164 kills for Hector's Chosen. That was against mostly against this club warrior over here that still managed 53 kills. And the skirmishers, look at this, 93 kills for the skirmisher. 93. It still didn't even earn an XP. Only one of them got its XP with 58. But, you know... Fantastic display from the Mycenaean player here right now. Both of these guys are regulars on my channel. Both of them know what they're doing. They're both very skilled in multiplayer. I think they both went into this battle saying, hey, I want to try some, some new things. Um, and for Hector of Troy here, JL Rico, Johnny Rico as we call him, the best advice I can give him is, you know, I definitely think he should have pulled the trigger with his heavy church and chariots a lot sooner, especially knowing that Mycenae had more chariots than he did. Um... Rico needed to take advantage of his of his chariots while he still had them, um, and then try to you know with the positioning make sure that his heavy infantry and his cordovantes were in a position to deal with the two reinforced chariots later on. If he had ended up losing his heavy Trojan chariots while killing huge portions of the light infantry of uh, of Mycenae's skirmishers and militia. Um, I definitely think he could have saved some funds to bring uh, better units if instead of bringing three archers, he had just brought one more renowned archer. That might have gotten him a little bit extra cash to upgrade this spear fighter into another Trojan defender. Um, that might have been... They, I think they might have been playing on the 4400 rule set, which means that you're only allowed to bring 4400 points worth of heavy infantry. Uh, he could have brought... I don't know. If he had ditched the militia warband 
brought only one or two renowned archers, he might have been able to afford another Hector's Chosen or another Cordovantes or another Heavy Trojan Chariot or a Minotaur. So many different tools that probably could have helped him out a lot in the end. With this really, especially the, the Militia and the Young Spears, the very low morale. If he had a Minotaur, he could have broken them all just with a Savage Roar ability. Anyway, that's it for this panel. I hope it brought you joy and entertainment to see it, and I hope you're as excited about it as I am about this game coming out to Steam at the earliest we can expect it, mid-August this year. Uh, it's been a fantastic journey for me playing this game this past year on the Epic Games Store. Not for everybody. Totally understandable. And if you haven't gotten it yet, I definitely say wait until it's available on Steam. And we're expecting some major updates coming out soon. Anyway, I hope you found that entertaining. I hope you found it valuable. Ta-ta. I love you all. I'm your all of the Appian Way. I'll see you guys in my next video.